Hello and welcome back to the technical guide to Factorio! Woo! Oh, so good. So once again, there's been a lot of stuff between episodes. We are working very hard towards the rocket research. There's been tons of research, mostly into rocket shooting speed, which we need level 5 to actually get a rocket silo. Research. Um, there's been a lot of research into that, which leads us into what the heck we're doing this time. We will be, um, first off, going out and killing some biters, because we need more alien artifacts to get more purple science packs. And then we learn a bit about rail signals and how they work. By, actually, by creating a line out to a copper production that we secure in the killing of biters. So, in addition to minor tweaks between episodes, the only big thing that we've done is we've started using our player logistics slot. So, what this does is the logistics robots will constantly keep me provided with these resources that are listed here, which in this case is 100 iron plates and 40 electronic circuits. So, so long as those are in a passive provider chest somewhere, the logistics robots will actually bring them to me. Which is pretty cool. I like it. It saves us a lot of time. But anyway, let's get right into the production of that and see how it goes. Okay, so we've been running out of purple science packs. It's pretty bad. All of that research has drained us actually almost entirely of purple science packs, which means we have to go out killing things. And I think, well... Ideally, we don't go out and kill things just for fun, because, of course, we're civilized people. It has to be said, ideal worlds do not exist, so, eh, this is mostly for fun. But we do need to secure for ourselves a new base of iron, be of, not iron, copper, because we are fairly low on copper in the base. So what we're going to be looking to do is secure this position here. And we probably don't even need a train station if we're gonna send stuff down this way. So that'll actually be pretty darn efficient. What we need to do is, of course, clear out the nearby bases because they're gonna be vicious as all bots about the whole, oh, you can't come into our land and try to kill our people. Oh, shut up, biters. Who do you think you are here? Look, we've got tank cannons like nobody's business. Get wrecked! I'm here to kill you all! Oh, this is pretty effective, actually. I mean, if I could only actually hit that spawner one more time. There we go. If we just take down the spawners first, that's pretty good. Wow, those cannon... Those tank shots are actually being pretty darn effective. Which is not the usual situation for those uh, cannon shots, it has to be said. Usually, they are... Uh, concerningly awkwardly bad. It's, it's it's sad, it has to be said. Disgusting. Almost borderline wretched and putrid, but I wouldn't quite go there. That's a bit too far. It does... It is true. Okay, so we took out this base, which was pretty easy. We got for ourselves a whopping 17 alien artifacts. That is absolutely terrible. That's nothing! How are we supposed to survive off of 17 alien science packs? That's 170 purple science packs. That is not enough. Not even close to enough. Look, we're only on rocket shooting speed 4. We need rocket shooting speed 5 before we can even start the rocket research. And you know how much the rocket research costs? 1,000 purple. Seriously? How are we going to survive with only 17 alien artifacts? It's the worst. These guys are pretty beastly. They do not want to give up. We've got quite a bit of armor on them. I don't think we're quite uh, set up to deal with this sort of vicious onslaught of enemies. Personally, not only do I believe it to be a vicious onslaught, but I also believe it to be completely unjust. We are clearly the just and holy rulers of this area. There is no reason that anyone should ever fight against us or try to stop our just and holy rule. Come on now, who do they think they are? Who do they think they are? Probably some sort of native inhabitants of the land. Disgusting. Who cares about the native inhabitants? 
We're the true inhabitants of this place. And we, my friends, have high explosives. And that generally means that we also own the area. That's just how the world works, people. The more explosives you got, oh no. We are trailing a huge group of these guys right now. That is the worst. Um, please, leave us alone! I'm sorry all of those things I said about you being primitive and disgusting. I mean, they're true, but at the same time, I'm, I'm sorry. Uh, okay, they're dead. Don't worry about it. We don't have to apologize to a bunch of dead people. That is true. Okay. So, with that, we've pretty much secured this area. Let's get to work actually setting up some decent defenses for the area. So we'll just do what we usually do in case the area in stone walls. Uh, supply those stone walls with powerful turrets. And then start setting up the way to bring all of those resources back. And I don't know. Are we going to use a rail system? I mean, I think we should use a rail system to do this. Not because it's efficient or anything, but because... In that situation, we'll get to um, actually figure out how rail signals work. And, you know, I, I spent some time trying to figure out exactly how rail systems work. So, so, guess what? We're going to do a rail system. It's going to be great. Don't worry about it. If you don't think it's going to be great, shut your mouth. Who do you think you are saying that this is not going to be amazing? My word. Okay. That looks like... A proper defensive establishment. Oh, remember the time when we could barely even make stone walls? Oh, it feels like so long ago. So long ago, because it actually was a long time ago. <laughs> it is true. Oh, my word. Okay. So let's set up for ourselves just a little gate here. And now for the defenses. Bada boom. Bada boom. Bada boom. We've taken out the most dangerous forts, um, enemy positions in this area. So I'm not terribly concerned about attacks against this copper area right now. I mean, there are farther out colonies. Like, there's a big one out slightly northeast around there. And that is a potential threat, but I don't think it's the biggest threat. I mean, they could throw much worse at us than that. Like, I don't know. Giant Tunneling Worms of Doom, which quite frankly, if if the enemy ever gets Giant Tunneling Worms of Doom, I quit. I'm not playing the game anymore. It's not going to happen. It was a good game right up until the point that there were Giant Tunneling Worms of Doom entering our fortress. And by the way, there definitely are not Giant Tunneling Worms of Doom in this game. Just needed to make that clear. For anyone who is currently quaking in their boots, don't worry guys, it's fine. You don't need to be concerned. Although, you might need to be concerned because there's still still a lot of frightening stuff here. Okay. So, yes, we need to put together... Are we shooting with a pistol right now? Come on. We have a rifle. So we need to put together a train line to head down here. Which is going to require a bunch of steel that we definitely don't have because we just used all of our steel. Um, so the general idea, let's actually go to the map. Uh-oh, uh-oh. Uh-oh, we are drifting. We were going to hit the walls there. That would have been bad. Do not consult your map while driving. It's kind of like texting while driving. It gets you killed, mate. Okay, so what we want to do, ideally, is link this up to factory proper north and we should be all good that'll be nice how in the world are we going to link this up to factory proper north that is actually a good question I'm not gonna try to explain it because I don't even 100% know exactly what we're going to do but trust me it'll work out don't worry about it so oh no oh no the train there we go Doing rail work while the train is actually running? Probably not the best idea in the world. That's how people die. No. I don't want to die, I think. 
I mean, I didn't check recently. Maybe we should check. Because if we do want to die and we're preventing it, I don't think that's the best situation. Has to be said. So... Let's see. This will be... Mm, no, 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 no. We don't want it like this. So this is going to be the rail line coming into factory proper north. And it should... The train should come in, link up with this loop, and then go into the factory, and then go back over to the copper mine. And it shouldn't be too complicated, I don't think. Yeah, we can have this come out here instead of where it was before, because that was not really the best place to have it previously. This is much better. So we could have it... We could extend the walls here and have this loop around right now, I think. And that would probably be the ideal situation. That'll be nice. Yeah, we got this. We got this, I swear. We got this. So we're just gonna place this... ...here, and it's gonna loop... ...back, right round... ...and link up... ...with the main line... ...of... ...the, um, train line that's going out to the iron colony. And that should work perfectly. This won't be quite as compact of a rail line as a lot of our previous ones were. Where they were very nice, very close together. But it doesn't really matter because it's not like we're going to use this space for anything in particular. So we're going to send it all the way over there. And we're going to have to have a lot of rail systems to actually prevent the two trains. The one from the Iron Colony and the one going out to the copper from ever actually intersecting with one another. And when, when you hear the word intersection, that actually means crash tremendously in a flaming ball of death. Yeah, that, that's, that's the thing that we're trying to prevent here. Flaming balls of death in every meaning of the word, really. Ugh, never mind. Okay, hi biters, how's it going? The biters are trying desperately to harass our walls. Unfortunately for them, our walls just really don't care at all about the situation in the slightest. So, there you go, there you go. How sad, you disgusting biters. So this track here is going to actually cross paths with these two lines. And then it's going to loop back around into this line so that the train can actually go back to the copper colony. Trust me, this is going to work out perfectly. Number one, look both ways. Look both ways before crossing the track, or you will die. Yep, that's the thing that will kill you. In that particular situation, it would almost always be the terrible train. So we'll link that up there. How are we going to do this? I think this might be a bit too close to do the link up properly. Maybe not though, maybe not. Let's see, we'll link that there and then... Oh yeah, we got this. Right like that. And we can um, resume power back to the iron colony because I'm sure they were very happy about the fact that we just caught cut power to them for like five seconds oh no oh no they weren't connected they weren't connected no okay so that's the train setup that should actually work with this um <clears throat> pretty much this track comes across here links back up here now what we need are a bunch of railway uh signals and we're going to have our nice little robots supply us with a bit of li of actual circuits so that we don't have to go out and get them because, you know, it's quite a walk. Where's our 
network. Can we be supplied here? Are there still... Oh, there's no more circuits in the system. No! We can't be supplied with any circuits right now. That's the worst. Okay, I'll get my own circuits. I see how it is. I see. Not helping the literal foreman of the friggin' factory. I get it. I get it. So let's make sure that we can build ourselves a train first off. Because if we don't have a train, there's really not much of a point of, you know, building this entire system to begin with. Which is not the best if we're building a system and then, you know, we can't even use it. Disgusting. So, what we need are these guys. These are rail signals. So we're going to create actually quite a few of them because we need quite a few of them. Okay, so after a bit of finagling, just making sure everything works out, we have got our rail signals set up. So there are two separate types of rail signals we have. We have crossing signals and we have merging or splitting signals. So these splitting signals work that you have one rail signal at the start of the split or in the case of merging at the end of it. And you have a rail signal down each path until they all flash green when there's no train actually between two signals. And then this will prevent trains from colliding into each other on a track like this. Which technically might not be necessary here, but we have it anyway. So these crossing tracks, pretty much each of these different paths is specifically detecting whether or not there's a train in the area between the two signals. So if there's a train there, it's going to cause um, pretty much all of the lights to turn red, except for the one that the train needs to pass through. And that will prevent, like, this train from coming down here and just barreling into the side of the train. Because this will be a red stoplight at that point, And that will be brilliant. And that, my friends, will prevent these two trains from actually colliding into each other. So what we need now is just a couple cargo trains. And we can actually prove that this works. As well as a train stop. That we also need kind of important. I will admit that rail signals are a bit complicated. They're not the easiest thing in the world. Apparent- No! No, I don't want to die! Save me! There we go. Okay. Um, they're not the easiest thing in the world. They're fairly complicated. I've heard that they're planning an update which will make them simpler by giving more guides as to where rails will actually- where rail signals will actually link up. Which would be nice, but for now, they're doable, but somewhat complex. So we need to actually have this facing the opposite direction. So we'll have this over here. And we'll just have this position protected in the future. We'll put a wall around it once the time actually comes. Um, but in the meantime, we'll just get over here and start actually running this train so that we can see quite perfectly that these two trains will never collapse will never collide and maybe maybe these trains will also run over some of these biters which would be brilliant so let's see patellate is apparently the new one that we put down and let's just run that no path Are we pointing in the wrong direction? I do believe that we're pointing in the wrong direction. Yeah, we totally just need to point this way and we'll be perfectly fine, right? Run the train, yep, there we go, yeah. We were just pointing the wrong way. So this train comes out here Stops at the stop. Let's just skip this stop. Go to the station. So it will run its way all the way down here through all of these stops. It'll, you know, take its little 
solstice here. We'll actually have, in the end, two separate sets of these passive provider chests, one on either side with smart pickers actually picking copper into one set and iron into the other. So that even if like all of the iron chests fill up or something, the copper will still be unloaded because there's passive providers. And look, that train will stop right there because there's currently a train in the station. There's no reason to collide. And what do you mean there's no path? What do you mean? So let's just pause that and actually run the train itself and prove to the train that there actually is a path. Yeah, look at that. There's a path right here. Hmm. This train seems a bit confused. But I, I think you get the idea. That is how it should work in some sort of ideal world, which clearly this is not an ideal world. Unfortunately, the system is not working perfectly right now. But I'll make sure it's working perfectly, at least by the next episode. Okay, so I got the train system running. In reality, we actually did everything kind of perfectly, except for one small issue. Um, we had these rail signals on the wrong side of the track. So they were pointing so that the train would go this way, but the train actually needed to go this way. So if you have a rail signal on the wrong side of the track, it actually works like a red rail signal and won't let anything pass through. And so the train over there was like, hey mate, there, there's no actual path because there's practically a constant red light there stopping it from moving through. So there's a little lesson to you people. Um, try to, you know, make sure you put your rail signals on the right side of the track. Literally the right side though. That, that's the correct side, the right one. Whatever, don't worry about it. It's working now, it's working. Well, anyway, regardless of whether or not this train thinks that there is or isn't a path, because there's totally a path, I'll figure it out. Um, that will bring us, I guess, to the end of this episode. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this, like and subscribe. Next time, very likely, we will have the actual rocket research completed. I will definitely work towards that. There'll probably be the destruction of numerous biters in the between times in order to ensure that we actually have all the proper artifacts for that. But until then, thanks for watching, and of course, enjoy the rest of your day.